praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. And also we thank our Papa for Woo! praying. Say so we love you, Papa. Love you, Papa. <laughs> and also we want to thank our church in Atlanta that is part of us. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor Mega. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We've been looking at the acceptable will of God. Say it. And um, you may want to ask, what is the, the rationale behind this lesson? It, it's, it's a way of helping us know what not to be jealous about. Because there's so much jealousy. And jealousy now, it leads to envy. Yes, now, sir. there's a big difference between jealousy and, and envy. envy. Where there is envy, there is division. Yes, sir. But where there is jealousy, there is death. The Bible says jealousy is as cruel <laughs> as, as the grave. Mm -hmm. He said, but where there is envy amongst you, there is division. You see? So there's a big difference between jealousy and envy. See? There's a big difference between jealousy and envy. But if you don't know what is acceptable unto you by God, you'll find yourself um, becoming an agent of either jealousy and envy. <coughs> so you see, on that grounds, therefore, it becomes easy to bring people down. Those that you see rising. <coughs> Up to today, I still don't understand why, personally, somebody can have an innate desire to bring <coughs> another person down. I still don't understand it. Because this world is too big. Yes, so much resource in this world yes, for you to look at what somebody already has mm -hmm. and desire them to go down. There's so much. I don't know about you, but there, so that's the way I reason. Yes, There's so much, yes, so much in this world, in this world yes, for you to have time to look at what somebody already has, which is just a flicker. Yes, if I less than a flicker. Yes, and walk towards bringing them down. I, and people had issues with me in that regard because I, I don't think the way they think. Neither should you. What's wrong if somebody has a new car? Be joyful for the person. Yeah, it's in your neighborhood. Because better ones are coming, right? Exactly. There was a time Volkswagen used to be the car. The way. But before Volkswagen, there was Sintron. Yes. But nobody talks about them today. Mm -hmm. So there's so much in this world. There's so much in this world. For you to sponsor envy or jealousy. But in this lesson, we're, we're looking at what God may permit in your life. Yes. And what yes. God may not. And, and, and we know that some of the things we teach in the church, people have issues with it. And I'm used to it. Because really, you think about it. If God really called me to preach what everybody is already preaching, then God is the most stupid person. Even without apologies to him, God will be the most stupid person to come in to come and preach what other people are already preaching. And God is a fool. Mm. And I don't like to say that kind of God. Honestly, At least you should be bored by now. Yes. If everyone yes. is preaching yes. <laughs> the same message. Yes. But even human nature is dynamic. Yes. If science can tell you that a man's DNA is different from another, yes. what makes you think they will need the same message? Yes. What makes you think so? What makes you think that they will need the same message? If a university is only committed to hiring only pharmacists, will medical will will, will um, law students apply to that school? No. no. Amen. Now. No. Now imagine a school, a medical school, saying we are the richest school on earth. You can never be the richest school it's because true. you only hire only medical students. Yeah. 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 So law students are somewhere. Engineering students yeah. are somewhere. Yeah. But if you can have all of them, yeah. that's more money for you. Yeah. 
then you think God doesn't even have sense mm. to just make it one sole message. Mm. And the, to boring. think that the only message God gave was all about Jesus, then that means Moses missed it. No. That means Elijah missed it big time. Mm. Even Jesus was preaching Isaiah. Yeah. The messages of Isaiah was what yeah. even Jesus was preaching. Yes, sir. Yes. And Isaiah never preached Jesus. Mm -hmm. So you know, he talked about Jesus. He never met him. Exactly. Let us use our heads. The Bible says each time Paul taught, the Abelians will reason it. Yes, sir. After he finished. But we, after we just hear the message, we just go, focus on other things. So I don't agree with what he said. Okay, fine. Can you reason why? Do you understand? Now, if you have a problem with my message, come to me. Let's talk about it. But maybe, listen, let's tell you one truth. Before we preach any message to you, just know that we've gone through 85 versions of the Bible. Wow. We've never said this to you. Wow. 85. Before we come and preach to you, yeah. even in economic conversation, we've gone through 85 versions. Don't think that what we teach are things we don't already know in the Spirit. We've seen all of them. We've seen the arguments, the possible arguments you are likely to bring up. So I said, okay, fine, let's sit, let's talk. Then I can understand why you are coming. Then I can say, okay, fine. And nobody ever asked us a question and I disrespected them. No. I said, no, no, no. I said, no, no, no. Let's look at this thing. So don't think we just come to just teach you, teach you what we think. Mm -hmm. It is the truth. That's what we said. If the human nature is dynamic, different from one person to the next, why do you think they will need the same message? I don't know about you. Man. If you come today to preach a sermon on the firstborn, do you think the last born, that message applies to the last born? Oh, but they will have But there is a firstborn. Yeah. yeah. The last born was happening. Amen. Now let's resume. Yeah. Yeah. It's possible a last born can live the life of a firstborn. Yes, sir. But he knows he's not the firstborn. Exactly. Yeah? Before the boy was born, Joseph was the last born. Yes. But the life he lived. It was the life of the firstborn. Yeah. So it's that even the firstborn prostrated. Yeah. Reuben, yeah? Yeah. But do you think they had the same message? No. The message Jacob was teaching the eleven sons. Yeah. Was it the same as the one Joseph, Joseph learned by experience no. in Egypt? No. 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 But who succeeded the most? Joseph. Joseph did. Okay. So we said, uh, we're looking at the three faces of God's will, or the yes. three realms of God's will, yes. which are what? The, the good will, the acceptable and the perfect will of God. The acceptable and the perfect will. Yes. Now, the explanation we gave earlier was to say something that no human being, no human being. say, no human no being, human not even Jesus, not even Jesus. Made, it made it into God's perfect will. Because if he did, then he will not come again. If he did, then there will be no need for the second coming. Because why? the reason why he's coming again is so that he can be the king. Yes. What was originally intended? Which was what the angel originally yes. told Mary. Yes, sir. Yes. Right? Yes. Go, to, go to Luke chapter 1. Go to Luke chapter 1. Jesus was supposed to be a king. Yeah. That was God's perfect will for him. Yes. But the Jesus who was supposed to be a king died a curse on yes. the cross. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Let's look at God's perfect will. Oh, no. Not at all. But you know, traditional Christianity teaches us that Jesus came to die. Yes. No. Lord. He chose to do it. Yes. It was not what God planned. Please, please. please. You know, I've always wondered until I later found out by the Spirit of the Living God why Jesus had to die for me. I've always wondered why He didn't know me. As at the time He even came 2,000 years ago, I was not even here. Honestly, sir. Jesus, if I was with God in heaven and Jesus came 2,000 years ago, why would Jesus die for me? I mean, I'm in my early 40s. Do you understand? Yes, <laughs> Jesus came over 2,000 years ago. I wasn't born. <laughs> Do you understand? Yes, 
So why would Jesus die for me? I don't know. It's not true. Mm. But why do we need to confess the name? Because that's what God Almighty wants. Yes, he sir. wants everyone to confess the name. Mm. For whose glory? For his glory. God's glory, not yes, Jesus' sir. glory. Yes, Even Jesus now is under the authority of his name. He says, anything you ask in my name, then I will do. If you don't ask in the name, I will not be able to do anything. Then he said, I will not even pray to the Father for you. But rather, the Father himself loves you. Yeah, because there are some people who think that when they pray, Jesus is in heaven talking to the Father. Jesus said, I will not do it. John chapter 16. He said, I will not do it. Go by yourself. The Father himself loves you. Okay. Uh, go to Luke chapter 1. Let, let's read from verses 26 to verses 32. Okay, let's read. Please read. So that you don't think we're making it up. But if you, are not, if you, if you want to be fully convinced, then look into your own Bible. Uh, this is the old King James. Well, if you have a newer version, you can read. One, two, go. It says, And, and in the, the sixth month, month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee, named Nazareth, to a virgin, a virgin, And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came. Okay. Okay. And the angel said with God. Okay. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb. Now, follow this carefully. And you shall call his name Jesus. Okay, now, read verses 32. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the, the throne, throne of his father David. Read the next verse. And of the house of Jacob forever. And of the kingdom there shall be no end. Did he mention anything about death? No. Did he mention anything about the cross? No. No. This was Jesus's. This was God's perfect will for the child Jesus before he was born. The mother already knew. You see, we, we told you. Uh, oh no, not you. We were at Rogers University, and we were explaining to those in Rogers that uh, what was the title of that message? Cutter. No. No. no not an assumed purpose. Yes, an assumed purpose. Yeah, we are Drogas University teaching that. And we explain to the people that the truth of the matter is that this was what Jesus was supposed to be in life. This was his purpose. And we began to explain that ideally, people, when people know, oh, he's a prophet, so they walk up. Please, can you tell me what God wants me to do in life? Can you tell me my purpose in life? We said, ideally, it is your biological father and your mother that should really know what you were supposed to do, even before you were born. When the angel came to uh, Mrs. Manuel, she told Samson's mother what Samson was supposed to do. So they knew they were not supposed to cut the child's hair. Yes. Even if the child said, my hair is too long, I feel stuffy, I want to cut my hair, they would say no. Because they already knew. Yes. Yes, sir. The same thing too with Abraham. Yes. Abraham knew about his child. Yes, sir. Jacob mm -hmm. knew about his children. Yes, sir. John the Baptist, mm -hmm. Zachariah the priest knew about the child. Yes. Ideally, biological parents should know what a child is supposed to be. But many don't. Many presume to say, be a doctor. Because I see that you care for people. The last time I had a court, you brought bandage. So go into medicine. You see. But ideally, biological parents should. But people today come. Uh, you see, prophets are ideally, uh, what, what prophets really should be in a person's life is to communicate a second-hand knowledge mm. because the first-hand knowledge of what a child is supposed to be should have been with the hands in the hands of the parents yes. 
the biological parents. Yes. But they don't know. That's why it says, honor your father and your mother that it may be well with you and then your days will be long. Yes, See, because for everything to be well with you, it should start with your biological parents, you honoring them because they are the ones who can guide you yes. in the path yes. that you should go. But, but we live in a day where the child says to the parents, I, I don't want you in my business. Mm -hmm. And of course, we live in an environment that seems to encourage that too. It's true, Lord. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, Jesus was supposed to be a king. Say it. Jesus was supposed to be a king. Whether you agree or not, yes. it's there. Yes, Jesus was supposed to be Say, a king. Jesus was supposed to be a king. Now, was this told after Jesus died no. or before he was born? Before he was born. Yeah. So what was Mary supposed to do? Guide, guide him. him. Because way. Joseph didn't know this. Yeah. Yeah. She, she was, was supposed to guide yeah. him. Yeah. Right? Yes, yes, sir. But did she? No. no. She kept stuff in her heart. And of course, Jesus was stubborn too. Yeah. At the beginning. Yeah. You know, people think Jesus was just a pious child. He was stubborn. Mm -hmm. At 12 years old, he challenged his parents. Mm -hmm. And then the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 5, verses 8, he had to learn obedience. No child was born with obedience, but you learn obedience. The Bible says Jesus had to learn obedience. How? By the things he suffered. So they punished him seriously. Okay. So this was supposed to be Jesus' perfect way. This was God's perfect way. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He says the throne, the kingdom, will never know any end. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But Jesus died on the cross. Yes, and the unfortunate thing now is that many think that dying on the cross was God's perfect will for Jesus. No, that was the acceptable will. That was the acceptable will. Not the perfect way. Wow. That was the acceptable way. Because he wanted it. Yes. He wanted to do it. Not because God told him to do it. Mm. Except this angel was a fool. And this is Gabriel who told Zachariah, I stand in the presence of God. I stand in the very presence of God. Okay. Now, please listen carefully too. When you are dealing with the acceptable way, it can turn out so successful that many can presume it to be God's perfect will for you. Yes, sir. Meanwhile, it was the acceptable will. We talk about Katrin Coleman today. Yes, Katrin sir. Coleman, all over the world. But she said she was God's third choice. Yes. She was not God's first choice. She was not even the second. She was the third. Yes, yeah, she produced Pastor Benny He and yes. many others like that. So imagine what the first choice would have been. So, all her work in ministry was even in the good will, not yes. even in the acceptable yes. will. Yes, sir. yes successful. Yes. So successful. Yes, sir. Because you said there are three realms to God's will. Yes. You have the good, yes. the acceptable, yes. and the perfect yes. will of God. Yes, sir. What people want to know God's perfect will, no matter what you hear a man of God, no matter how big they are, they tell you, we are working in God's perfect way. It's nice to say. Okay. This is God's perfect way for Jesus, right? Yes. Now, we are the church. You know Jesus was not a Christian. Yes. In case you don't know. Yes. If you thought he was a Christian, he wasn't. He was a stark Jew. Yes, sir. Who lived by the Jewish laws. Yes, sir. And the Jewish laws, he lived by a kingdom. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's just the truth. Okay. Now, when evil rose from the dead, he was still not a Christian. Mm -mm. He rose to be a king so that he can come back. He's not a king in heaven. That, that's another thing again. People think Jesus is a king in heaven. Ruling who? God? <laughs> you, don't, you don't understand this. You know, the way the church today has exalted Jesus, God is very humble. I'm telling you. 
Some of us who have been privileged to have access to the curtains of eternity, to enter that realm, to see some things four times, we've come to see that God is very humble. Because the way Jesus is exalted by many today, and push God aside. In fact, some have even said that Jesus is God himself. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's too big to say. Jesus is God Almighty. Mm. Do you know what you are talking about? Mm. I fear your boldness. Mm. To say Jesus is God Almighty. Yeah. <laughs> Only a mad person would talk that way. Jesus is not God Almighty. Mm -hmm. Even Jesus in John chapter 5 from verses 30 to 33 says, My Father is mightier than I. Mm -hmm. The Father is mighty. Yeah. You know who God is? God that all men prostrate yes. before. It's because you've not seen some things. May God open your eyes to see some things. There's a reason why we, see because there are some things you can't explain in teaching. Yeah. There are some things you have to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when, did you ever read Job challenge God? Yes. yes. And God said, Job, you challenge me. Yes. Me. Yes. Where were you when I was creating yes. the heavens and the earth? Yes. You come before me. Yes. Me. Yes. You're that familiar. Yes. <laughs> God is very humble. So why not you? Ask me, sir. Because you think you are relevant. Oh. And you are. Oh. To yourself. Oh. That's just the truth. Oh. <laughs> you are to yourself. Yeah. See, ask yourself. In a week, how many people listen to you? How many people listen to you? Wow. Many people listen to you? Well, we know. I mean, let's say in a week. Let's say 50 to 100 people. Were you able to impact the lives of 50 to 100 people? And let's say out of the 50 people, 30 were new. Then you are probably doing something. But if it's the same circle of people, please don't think you are the only people I talk to. <laughs> there are many people I talk to. New <laughs> people every day. And you now think, four of your friends, You've had that circle for four years now. Each one year. You think you are worth listening to? Oh. Because a um, group of four people like you listen to you. God Almighty, the whole world, everything in creation hears him. That's right. And you call him Jesus. When you read Acts chapter 4, from verses 26, you see, the reason why we're give you these scriptures yes, is to let you know that we have proofs. When you read Acts chapter 4 from verses 24 to verses 30, even the apostles of Jesus prayed to God oh, yes. and told God, grant us through the name of your holy servant mm -hmm. boldness. Yes, Jesus yes, is, is a servant yes, before yes, God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jesus yes, sir. is a servant. Mm -hmm. Not even uh, glorified son, servant. Yes, sir. The apostles they prayed it to God that grant us mm -hmm. through the name of your holy servant Jesus boldness to preach. They were telling God. And when they did, the foundation shook. Yes, sir. You think yes. God is Jesus? <laughs> and you know, even when Jesus said. A time will come, you will see the Son of Man glorified, mm. sitting on his throne. You know, many think the throne is the throne of God Almighty. Mm -hmm. It's this one. It's this one, the throne of David. Yes, it is sir. the throne of David. Yes, How dare you think that Jesus was... Eh? Wow, I fear your boldness. Mm. That Jesus will come and sit on... <laughs> I can't imagine it. Sit on the throne Where God sits. of the God on substantiate. God on substantiate. Do 
Jesus will come and sit on his throne. The farthest Jesus could ever achieve in life. Which is why he's coming again. Is to sit on the throne of David. David is his father. Except you want to say David is God Almighty. No, no. And it's true. This already settles every presumed notion or theology about Jesus. Yes, sir. But many don't read this. They don't. Okay, the Jesus now you are calling God died a cost man on the cross. Why would you want to serve a cost? Mm. Mm. He died. The Bible says cost is anyone that, that hangs, hangs on, on the tree. tree. That's not true. And the worst message they preach in traditional Christianity is to say God gave Jesus up to be destroyed. And then Jesus cried, Why had that forsaken me? It's not true. God never forsook Jesus. This was God's original plan for Jesus. What plan could be better than this? For you to inherit what your father yes, once had. Yes. Didn't the Bible says a good man shall live an inheritance for his children? Yes. What could be better? And even Jesus is coming back again for, for to get it. Not to take over the whole earth, no. as many think. In fact, the heavenly Jerusalem is just 1,500 miles long. It's a cube. It's like from here to Alabama, from New Jersey to Alabama. Because from New Jersey to Atlanta is 800 miles. So add some additional miles. Let's say to Alabama down. That's how big the New Jerusalem is. In length, breadth, height. It's a cube. It does not look like the whole world. No. <laughs> Even America is still bigger. Yeah. If you read the book of Revelation chapter 22, I'm not lying, it's there. Okay. Now, having seen this, something we want to make you say, I don't know whether I've already said it, but <laughs> let's say it again, just to be sure that I've said it. There is always somebody's acceptable way can be so good. Yes. Yeah? Yes, sir. Jesus is acceptable. He was good. good sir. He was so good that he, he had to even die for. Mm. Amen. Mm. Listen, have you ever thought about it? How do you think God felt when Jesus, let us suppose Jesus, when he died, came to heaven mm. to see the Lord. Mm. Do you think God was pleased? No. Not at so, all. Oh, my son Jesus, welcome. Even God was in me. Why did you have to make that choice to die for this people? Oh. When this was my plan for you. The question is, when did God begin to plan this for Jesus? When? Second Samuel chapter 7. I will never fail in my life. I will never fail in my life. No, I'm not talking to you. I'm just talking to myself. I'm surprised you heard it. But I'm not talking to you. <coughs> Second Samuel, right? Second Samuel. Chapter 7. Yes, sir. The reason why I want to show you this is because, again, traditional Christianity teaches that Jesus came because Adam fell in the garden. Yes. So they say, Adam fell in the garden. That was why Jesus came to redeem man from the fall. It's not true. It's not true at all. Why did God have to wait over close to six million years before Jesus would come? Do you know how many people have died between Adam and Jesus? Do you know how many people have died already? Mm -hmm. So what happens to them? That means they are doomed. Because that notion came from the Roman Catholic Church. And we brought it into the Pentecostal circle and been driving it through the truth of everyone. It's true. 
He opens his mouth to receive it. Mm -hmm. The longest church so far, or let's say the longest, uh, the longest serving denomination mm -hmm. is the Roman Catholic Church. Yes. They've been there now for over 700 yes. years. And they have the political power too. Yes. They have the resources. Yes. No Pentecostal church is still as large as the Roman Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. The Roman Catholic Church, the population is bigger than any nation on earth. Yes. They have about 1.5 billion members. Yes. <laughs> Do you understand? Yes, sir. Every president of any nation bows to kiss the ring of the Pope. Yes. Because he has both ecclesiastical power and political power. The ecclesiastical power is not probably necessarily given by God, but there's a, there's a legitimacy that makes the power divine. Yeah. You know, because there's a way legitimacy yeah. can make you look divine. Yes, sir. When Herod was making a, an oration in Acts chapter 12, the people said, this is the voice yes, of God. This is the voice yes, of God. There's a way legitimacy can make you look divine. Yes, sir. Because with your legitimacy, you can even kill a divine person. One anointed. Herod killed James. Herod also killed John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. So there's a way legitimacy can empower you. And you look very divine. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, God is not behind Amen. your act. But he probably exalted you to be a ruler. Amen. And made the people give you legitimacy. We said any blessing God ever gives you, yes, sir. we've told you that, I think it was in Atlanta, we said any blessing God ever gives you is illegal. Yes, you have to be yes, sir. It is men yes, around you yes, sir. that makes it legitimate. Yes, sir. Because spirits don't have the legal rights to be in the earth. Yes. And God is not here. Yes. He's yes. So he brings men around you, he sends men around you to give you what legitimacy, legitimacy to what he already gave you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Simon the CIA anointed David to be king. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, sir. But it took King David 20 something years yes. before men gave him what? The legitimacy, legitimacy to be the king. Yes, sir. Men anointed him again. Yes. Sir. Why? Because there was already a legitimate ruler. Yes. In the person of King Saul. Yes, sir. So King David had the anointing to the throne. Mm -hmm. King Saul had the legitimacy of the people. Yes. Yes. God couldn't remove him. Exactly. The guy finally had to commit suicide to die. Yes. Then, Jesus, uh, then King David gained what? Legitimacy. legitimacy. Yes, sir. Already had the anointing, but now he needed the legitimacy of the, of the people. people. Yes, sir. So there's a way you, with your legitimate operation, mm -hmm. you may look divine. That's why even a prophet can see a mayor walking and say, Mr. Mayor, he honors the legitimate because he knows the people, even his members, honor the... The mayor says, all you people stop coming here. You stop. There's a no, I will stop. Police will carry you away. Uh, do you understand? Police will take you away. So legitimacy can... One with legitimacy can operate like, like a divine ruler. Why, you, why do you think you are going to school? For legitimacy. For legitimacy. Yeah. Why do you think you are studying to write your boarding exam to get your license? Mm -hmm. yeah. Who gives it to you, God or men? Men. <laughs> Recall, when we started ministry, even in New York, um, my leaders, had to tell me. If I, one day they just said, we are coming to pick you up. So, I said, sir, I said get dressed. I said, no problem. Dr. Henry Mark, Dr. Miller, Apostle Mosley, they came to the house, picked me up, and said, we are going to the city council wow. in Manhattan. Wow. I said, what for? <laughs> said, well, that's, with the way God is using you, you need the right documentation mm -hmm. to do ministry in New York because yeah. you can lay hands on somebody the person falls now <laughs> and then they say <laughs> <laughs> did you even recognize you to be a minister mm -hmm. and when we got to the city council we saw a long queue of pastors mm -hmm. trying to get their license mm -hmm. when it got to my turn did they say 
uh, which one are you? I said, <laughs> <laughs> so I said, actually, uh, by grace, I'm called to be a prophet and a teacher. She said, thank you very much. I want to ask you, what's the difference between apostle, pastor, prophet? Because they all come with different names. So that was my own test. I was not explaining each. I said, but you don't even need to see visions. There are physical signs to identify them. She said, please tell me. So I began to teach her. When we were done, I said, but I see a pain on, on your leg. She said, yes, I just had surgery on my knee. I said, let me pray for you. We prayed. She said, oh, then I think you are also an apostle too. Wow. <laughs> That's why she gave me, she gave me license. Oh, That's why I'm going to every mark. Yeah. They call me apostle. They were all there. But what do you think we went to the city council to get? Legitimacy. That's why in the city of New York today, I can officiate marriage and it is legal. Because they gave me that legitimacy. It wasn't God who did it. They want to even give me the legitimacy I was teaching now. But, but she had the legitimate authority to issue it to me. I don't know that it makes sense. So. Okay. Back to... Where yeah, the promise God made to give Jesus the throne of David all started from. That's why we said Jesus did not come because Adam fell in the garden. Jesus didn't come because of that. Because God will not wait that long to do that. As a matter of fact, the people in Adam's day who were referred to as the Antiluvian folks, the flood flushed them away. Yes, sir. The flood. Remember the flood of Noah? Yes, flushed them away. Yes. Now, don't ask me where they went to. <laughs> Let's focus on this one. <laughs> okay. Let's go to verses 1. Now, this was when King David had more or less finished fighting all the battles he needed to fight in his life, about 30-something battles, many kingdoms he fought. Now, let's start from verses 1. And it came to pass, when the king sat up in his house, and the Lord had given him rest around about from all of his enemies, that had the king set up to the prophets, see now, I dwell in the house of Seder, but the ark of God dwelt in the curtain. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in thy heart, for the Lord is with thee. Okay, and now. it came to pass that night that the word of the Lord came unto Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, Thus saith the Lord, Shall thou build me a house for me to dwell in? Wow, will you build me a house? God was surprised. Nobody ever thought of building me a house. Wow, David said he would build me a house. God has never... This word made God declare that David was a man after his heart. Yes. Since the beginning of time, yes. no human being ever oh, thought of building God a house. And this was not an inspiration of God in David. This was, his own this was just his own edition. choice. Yes. See, no, look, I dwell in a house. Yes. Now let me just build God a house. Yes, God came to Nathan that night saying, Wow, you mean David said he wants to build me a house? Wow! It's like somebody said, well, I'll buy you a rose oil. So, yes. but also, Oh, but I'm not going to buy me a rose oil. Yes. Wow. Yes. Let's read. Yes. No, no, no. Start from verses 5 again. Want to go? Go and tell my servant David, Thus saith the Lord, Shall thou build me a house for me to dwell in? Whereas I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, that I have walked in the tent and in the tabernacle. God said, I'm always under a canopy. Oh. <laughs> Moses put me under a canopy. <laughs> so, what Moses never thought of, no one ever thought of it. They always put me under cotton and canopy. Wow. You want to build me a house. Yes. You think about this. With so much that the Lord gave them. Yeah. Mm. 
gave them a land that was not theirs. Flay with milk and honey. None. None. Carl. What is it you are not thinking of? <laughs> yeah, God has done so much for you. What are you not thinking of? Because right now you feel that God owes you something. And God is saying, what, what is it that I have not done for you? You know, two days ago, um, I, I was just taking my bath. Then the voice of the Lord came to me. He said, there's something you want to talk to me about, but you've not been able to do so. I said, no, nothing. Everything is fine. He said, no, talk to me. There's something you have. He said, do you have issues with me? I said, no, Lord, I don't. He said, why don't you have issues with me? I said, I cannot. He said, why not? I said, because you've been good to me. But even if I have concern, I will not even bring it up to you. He said, but you still have issues. I said, no, I don't have issues with you. I have issues with me. Then he said, if you do, then fix it. I said, I will. He said, but help me. He said, okay, no problem, I will. He said, but I'm glad you don't have issues with me. He said, but many do. When things go wrong in their lives, they say, oh God, oh God. I said, but Lord, you know I will never do that. He said, I'm surprised you've not done that at all. And I've never done it. And I will never do it. Even if you tell me my, my mother died. Well, she's already dead anyway. <laughs> Even if you tell me my father died. Hey, I will never, I will never do anything like that. But people find it very easy. A relationship breaks up now. Oh God, why did Johnny left? Well, his name is Walker. Johnny Walker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Walker. <laughs> Uh, yes. Now, you think about it. God gave them so much. Land flowing with fire. They, they forgot God quickly. This was the first person who remembered something he wanted to do for God. But what are you not, what are you not thinking you should do for God? What is it? Okay. Let's read. Verse 7. No, no, don't, don't, don't read now. You are feeling bad now because I said, what have you not done for God? Don't feel bad. Let's finish. But after serving, you can feel bad. <laughs> okay, let's read now. In So God is saying, I took you, I took you from nothing and I exalted you to be king. Oh, God says, I remember your story very well. The book of remembers was open yes, now. Sir. Listen, I remember this guy very well. I remember your story very well. Out of nothing, I remember where I picked you from. Yes, from the gutters of Oshodi, yes, Lagos, Mavoluku. I picked yes, you, brother, yes, and I brought you to America. Yes, sir. That's a because of. Okay, so let's read. <laughs> let's start from verse 8 again. Where to go? Now, therefore, so shall thou say unto my servant David, Thus say the Lord of hosts. I took thee from the sheep cult, from following the sheep, to be a ruler over Israel. And I will be wheresoever thou went. Yeah, it's telling you. Anywhere you went to, I followed you. Even when you took Bessie into the bedroom, I followed you. When you went, <laughs> when you went to find battles, I followed you. Oh, okay, yeah. I never left you. Wow. wow. Even when you turn up the light, close the window. Make sure nobody was there. God said, I helped her. Yeah. I followed you. <laughs> you see something? God said, I noticed you when you were following the sheep, not leading the sheep. Yeah. He was following the sheep. Yeah. So when God said, when I saw the way you were following the sheep, I decided to follow you. Yeah. That means God is saying, I became your own sheep. Yeah. When you follow the people you think they are not it, God says, I will now become yeah. your follower. Yes, sir. I believe anything you believe. Yes. I follow you. Yes, sir. Don't be too exalted with self. Yes. To think that you don't really need people. Oh, I need help. Anyway, maybe that's not your business. Let's continue. Let's read. Verse is nine now. And I was with thee when so far thou went, and I cut off all thy enemies out of thy sight, and I made thee a great name. He said, I made you a great name. Wow. Okay, let's read. Like 
Abraham was a great man in the earth. Isaac was a great man in the earth. Jacob was a great man in the earth. Great men have come and gone. He said, now, nah, I've added you to the diary. I've brought you into the divine hall of fame. The hall of fame of the earth. Your picture is there in the halls of great men in the earth. Wow. Like me too. Yeah, maybe you don't desire, but like me too. Oh. So even if you mention Buddha, Muhammad, Jesus also will be mentioned. David will be mentioned. David, actually. David will be mentioned. Okay. Wow. Let's read. Moreover, please read loud. Let's read. You see that? Just because a man was thinking of doing something for God. Just a thought. thought. He has not done it yet. God says, wow. Hmm. In your mind, you are thinking of how to bring another person down. Okay, let's... Maybe maybe this will help you change your mind. Okay, let's read now. You see that? God said, I would rather build you a house. Wow. Wow. Okay, Okay, read on now. And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee. You see that? This is the path now. This is where Jesus was now conceived. This was where the idea for a Jesus came into pass. It began with the thought of King David wanting to do something for God. God says, what can I do to glorify this guy, David? Okay, I, I, I'll give you a seed. Yes, sir. That was how Jesus came. This is Jesus' origin. Yes, sir. In the beginning of the beginnings, there was no Jesus. There was no thought of him. Wow. There was no thought of him. It doesn't matter what you have heard in the Bible. Now, I'm not trying to change your mind. The Bible is there. It's, it's clear. It's written. I didn't read the Bible. And when thy days be fulfilled, verse 12, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and I will set up thy seed after thee. We shall proceed out of your from your intestine, will come out from you, and I will establish his kingdom. And he shall what? be the house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Who is he talking about? Jesus. This is where Jesus was conceived. In the mind of God. Wow. In the mind. So they never would have been any Jesus just because no, God, God. some men have lived. Because, because, because King David thought of doing something for God. God said, I will reward you with someone who will carry your name and he will sit on your throne forever. Yes, your throne will never expire. Yes, sir. This was where. So here he has talked about Jesus. Now he wants to talk about Solomon. Oh. Now let's read. Okay, no, still talking about Jesus. See what the now says here. You see that? That's why people think that Jesus is the father of Jesus. But he already said, from your stomach, I will bring us. I'll take her. Actually, in the Hebrew, that word Boaz means sperm. From your sperm. Even after you die. He already told King David, you will die. When you die, your sperm, I will still bring it. Yes. So when the angel came to Mary that day, he was planting the yes, sperm sir. of King David inside her womb. Yes, a dead man's sperm. Yes. In the womb of a virgin. Overshadowed by an angel. Yes. Please, Joseph, shut up. Uh-huh. <laughs> See, I want to push her away secretly. See, you don't know. Dead men are... In, Dead men are spirits. This is a divine they are running affairs here. So where did you come from? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, let's continue. Yeah. <laughs> then God said, I will be his father and he shall be my son. Where do you think this is? Adoption. Ah. So Jesus is an adopted child. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. An adopted son. Ah. 
Christmas. Jesus is not the original seed of God as traditional Christianity teaches. Jesus is a sperm from King David. But then God did what? Adopted him like he did you and I. He said by the spirit we are adopted into sonship. You even have a better story. Your father is not dead. Your mother is not dead. Just that your mother, she may be a virgin, she may not. Ask your father. Only he knows. But if I don't, I don't, I'm not sure about my own. <laughs> okay. Verse 14. I will and you shall be my son. See, already from the way you are sounding, it sounds like you disagree with us. No. It's not in the Bible. I, I didn't write it. I disagree with those who wrote it. But if you still want to be sure, at least you brought a Bible from your own house. Oh yeah, Second Samuel chapter seven. Open it so that you can read it. We're in verse fourteen now. Read. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If you commit iniquity, well, talking about Jesus, so it is possible he can do wrong. Yes. And he did. Yes, he did. That's why he died on the cross. Yes, sir. If you commit iniquity, I will what? punish him with a rod. With the word of men. He yeah, ain't talking to me. If he does any, I will finish him. Up. I will use men to discipline him. Why? Yeah, because men have legitimacy. Yes. Pontius Pilate had the legitimacy of a ruler. Yes. Romans chapter 13, verses 1 to 7 talks about rulers. That every authority is ordained by God. If you do well, they will praise you. If you do wrong, they will punish you with the sword. God says, I will what? If he, if, if, he had better not do wrong. Why do you think the Lord was saying this? Because of King David. I know how the sperm is going to come from you. And I see how you are behaved. Yes, your throne, you only reign for 40 years. This one is going to reign forever. If he does anyhow, he will see anyhow. <laughs> If it does not, because since he's coming, so before he starts saying, why do you behave like this? Or you, fathers, you say to yourself, why do you behave like this? Check yourself. Oh, you remember? <laughs> I came from you. Are you sure, your father? You are. You are still asking. <laughs> oh, yeah. But concerning Jesus, if he does iniquity, God already made it clear. Why would God do this to Jesus? God already told him. That's what I was thinking. So, see, hmm. Hmm. Lord have mercy. If he does, if he commits iniquity, yeah. I will what? Chest him with the rod of men. Yeah. Okay, read. And, and with the straps. I remember the one that said he was wounded for a trouble. Bruce, he says, I will use men. If he does, so he had better not do wrong. Yeah. But he did. He, did yeah. he chose to die for the people. Died on the cross as a curse. Mm. That's an iniquity to the name of the Lord. Wow. Wow. So you want to know about Jesus? This is his story. Mm. Not the one you watch in movies. Wow. That one is a lie. Mm. And people have lived it and died believing it. Only for them to wake up to spiritual reality mm. when the curtains of eternity were closed. Okay, read. But my mercy shall not depart. You see why he rose him from the dead? He's trying to tell you why. He... And what? You see that? He said, What I did to Saul, I will really not do it to him. Saul committed suicide. So, but this one, my mercy will still be. I will, not, I will not treat him like the way I removed King Saul. Hi. God is giving you precedence. Yes, sir. Okay, read. And thy house and thy kingdom shall be established for long, forever, and before thee, thy throne shall be established forever. What is behind this? The mercy of God. My mercy. So Jesus was resurrected by the mercy of God at work. See, let's begin to engage our minds. Yes, sir. What have you not thought of? 
Because it looks like anything you think of, somebody has already thought about it. King David thought of something no human being yes, had ever thought of. Yet he said he was born in iniquity. His mother was not a virgin. Yes. So your mother doesn't have to be a virgin for you to have an excellent yes, mind. Sir. It's a choice. The people you have around you can help you boost an excellent mind. King David had Nathan, had Nathan the prophet, yes, had God the seer, yes, had Samuel the seer, yes, had all of them around him. With these three men, his mind had to be excellent. Yes, sir. Who do you have? Your best friend. <coughs> Sometimes when we have the privilege to talk to our papa, Papa Joshua Aguila, and he's telling me what he's doing now, what he's planning to do, I'm like, wow. Even why I'm privileged to hear him on the phone as he's talking to me, I, I, I just say, man, kind of this way. Exactly. The man of God that I'm under, that I'm following, oh. see the capacity of his exactly. mind. Oh my God. The depth of his mind. Yes, sir. Lord have mercy. I can't hmm. this way. And you are living in apartment 2B now. 2B? For 15 years. Lord, help my life. I'm not saying. It is yes. bad to live in apartment mm -hmm. 2B. I can't end in apartment 2B for life. I'm not saying so. You know, you have 2A, 2B. Two two yeah. When somebody is going to check the mail, you're asking the person, did you... So the mail ends up in your mailbox? <laughs> Even the post service box, the uh, officials, they don't know. Because it looks like the 2B service will begin to clean. Oh. It, it, clean, it looks like 2-3. Because that stroke, <laughs> it clings. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so the best is that it was 20, 23. Oh, Lord. So it's to me. Then your son, you took his crayon. Oh, my God. That's real. <laughs> <laughs> I've lived there. So it's not as if I'm mocking you. At least our sure. folks, I've shown them where I used to sure. live in Brooklyn. They do stuff like that in but I made up my mind yes, sure. not yes. to end there. My apartment number was apartment 19. But I don't live in an apartment anymore. No way. It was a decision I made. Lord, correct me. Lord, correct but let your mercy lift me up. But let your mercy lift me up. Yes, sir. When I'm wrong, yes, correct me. When I'm wrong, but let your mercy still make, make me prevail. Yes, I like that one. That's, that's what can lift you. Yes, sir. Not the skills you have. No. You, you think you know everything. That's the truth. No, Lord, correct me when I'm wrong. Lord, correct me. But let your mercy lift me. But let your mercy lift me. This is the truth. It doesn't matter whether people don't want to show me mercy. But Lord, let your mercy lift me. But Lord, let your mercy lift me. Okay, so let's read number seven. According to all these words and according to all this vision, so did Nathan speak unto David. Then went King David. In and sat before the Lord, and he said, Who am I, O Lord? And what is my house that thou hast what brought me this far? He did too. And this was yet a small thing in thy sight, O Lord. But, but thou hast spoken also of thy servant's house for a great while to come, and in the manner of men, O Lord. Please read now. And what did David say more unto thee? For thou, Lord God, knowest thy servant. Okay, fine. Let, let's, if, it's a beautiful story. How he was praising the Lord. And this is what he said. Thou will gather my gedula. Yes, sir. Thou will give me arrogant advancement. It was here. If you read down. But what? But what? What? Again, we just brought you here to show you that when Angel Gabriel came to Mary that day and said what he said in Luke chapter 1 verses 26 to 32, it was all aimed towards fulfilling what God had promised King David 1,000, sorry, 2,500 years earlier. Because the distance between Jesus and King David is 25 generations and 100 years is a generation. So it is what, 2,500 years. Now it's time for the promise to be fulfilled. Jesus said, mm-mm. I don't want it. I don't want it. 
That's why even when the disciples came in Acts chapter 1, verse 6, they, they said, Sir, well, would you now, now that you are, we, we can't go, you are back from the dead, will you now restore the kingdom of Israel? Because they all knew this. He yes. said, It's not for you to know the time, the time, the, the time of season. Of the father. father. Now, when the Lord said to King David here, mm -hmm. I will build you a house instead. Mm -hmm. yeah. What house do you think the Lord did? Mm -hmm. Built the new Jerusalem. Oh. Remember we read that yesterday? Yeah. The new Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. The new Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. It was the Lord who built it. Mm -hmm. It is that new Jerusalem that has the streets paved with gold. Oh, yes, yeah. And we said heaven is not paved with gold. It is the city, the new Jerusalem, that has the streets paved with gold. Not heaven. And the New Jerusalem in Revelation chapter 21, verses 10. Revelation 21, verses 10, it says it's on a mountain in the realm of the spirit. Yes. So when people say they went to heaven and saw the streets of heaven paved with gold, it's a lie. They, went to new Jerusalem. they rather went to the New Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. If what they saw was true, then yes. it is not heaven. It is the New Jerusalem. Yes. And the New Jerusalem is not in heaven. It's on a mountain in the realm of the spirit. Yes. Yes. And that's the truth. But because you say you've been to heaven. Where I went to, I did not see any streets paved with gold. Mm. That's just the truth. Mm. That would tell you I didn't go to that new Jerusalem. Jerusalem. I went somewhere, somewhere else. Because there are different cities in the realm yes. of the spirit. Yes. That's another subject. Mm. You get to see different. Angels have their own domain. Yeah. Angels have their own domain yes. where they operate from too. Yes. There are different domains. But I'm a success forevermore. Now, the reason why we showed you this is that even though this was God's perfect way for Jesus, yes, are you listening to us? Yes, sir. Even though this was God's perfect way for Jesus, Jesus did not fulfill this. Yeah. Which means Jesus, when he came, he did not fulfill God's perfect way. Yes, sir. Which is why he's what? Coming again yes, to fulfill this now. Yet, the will Jesus fulfilled was the acceptable will. Now, <laughs> the life Jesus lived on earth was another man's perfect will. Yes, 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 yes. yes. True. John. John the Baptist. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you read Luke chapter 1, verses 15 to 17, yes. what Jesus did when he walked the face of the earth, was what John the Baptist was supposed to do. Yes. Yes. John the Baptist said he does not want it. Mm. And Jesus didn't want his own. <laughs> and Jesus took it up. Yeah. Yeah. Do you understand? Yes, so, John the Baptist's perfect will mm -hmm. was Jesus' acceptable will. Yes, sir. God permitted it because someone had to do it. Yes, sir. God permitted it. But for Jesus' perfect will, he's coming back to fulfill it. Maybe John the Baptist said, God forbid, I don't want to be. He, he even hated the people. Yeah, he Have you heard John the Baptist say, you generation of vipers, God punish you. It will not be well with your father and mother. Who told you to run and come here? You want to do baptism now? It will not be well. Oh, no, she will be. Oh, yeah, bro. Kuni Dafu, Baba, Mama, God punish all of you. Oh, yeah, come now. And all the people, they wear their Versace. They are Louis Vuitton. Do you know they are Louis Vuitton? They say, being jelly, everything about you, so yeah, you dig them inside. <laughs> he was a very angry prophet. <laughs> Carry all of them. Lord. Those who wore Cerulean or Senegalese mm -hmm. lace. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah. Have you seen Senega Senega yeah. Senegalese mm -hmm. guinea? Yeah. Nice one. Oh, yes. Yeah. The corn with the embroidery. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Jolomi. Tell me, come here, come here, come here, come here. <laughs> <laughs> Let me remove it, so don't remove anything. <laughs> <laughs> Your cloth is even corrupted. Right? <laughs> you know he, he mess everybody up. Love even Jesus, he didn't tell Jesus. When I said the sandals of the shoe, I'm not ready to untie. So Jesus entered with the sandals. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, you want me to, I told you, you do it. You say I should do it. <laughs> 
had the privilege to touch the head yes. of Jesus. Yes. Wow, what an honor. Yes. Okay. So much to say, but um, let's begin to close now. Now, we said one man's perfect will, mm -hmm. what God had planned for yeah. someone to attain, can be another man's acceptable yeah. will. Yeah. Because that one refused to do yeah. it. Yeah. So it's possible a lady was supposed to marry Brother XYZ. Mm -hmm. But Brother XYZ didn't want sister Y. Yeah. So Brother ABC married her instead. Yeah. Had a good marriage, beautiful children. It was God's acceptable will. Yeah. But it may not have been God's perfect will for that sister. Okay. In conclusion. Here we just showed you. The reason why we brought you here into Second Samuel chapter 7 was to make you understand that Jesus was not a Christian. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I know you are a Christian, but Jesus is not. Jesus, remember, you thought I had forgotten. I didn't forget. I have an angel. He's actually there, near Pastor Emma. There's an angel standing there. He's the one telling me, and I'm telling you. Amen. Yeah. Two are downstairs by the door. Wow. As I'm talking, I'm still sitting there. So, I have not forgotten. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I will never fail in my life. I will never fail. With the forces of heaven around me, I can't feel. With the of Even if I make a mistake, we can no, fix it. I have an angel. I have an angel that is a fixer. When I do wrong, he fixes yes, things. Yes, sir. So, today I help you. That work in me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. May God give you angels like that. Yes, Say, I'm not alone. <laughs> okay, Jesus was not a Christian, remember. And the reason why he's not a Christian is because he was never supposed to be. Mm. It's true. He was supposed to be a king. Yes, sir. To rule over the nation of Israel. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. But you and I are Christians today. Yes, sir. What that means is that we believe in the name God has exalted. Yes. And we are following mm. the beliefs and the principles of what that name by the Holy Spirit reveals to you yes, and I. Yes, sir. That's why we're Christians, right? Yes, so, God's perfect will for Jesus was for him to reign as a king, which Jesus did not fulfill. Mm -hmm. But he's coming back to fulfill it, yes, right? Sir. Remember, we've been saying it. Yes, sir. But the question is, what is God's perfect will for the church? Because God's perfect will for Jesus is not the same as God's perfect will for, for the, the church. church. Yes. People think it is one and the same. They are not the same. That's why we took time to show you God's perfect will for Jesus. Which Jesus is still coming back to fulfill. Yes, yeah. So what is God's perfect will for the church? Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 4. Wow. Let, let's, read. Let, let's read Ephesians chapter wow. 4. Thank you, Holy Spirit. From verses 11. We read that in our first class, right? Yes. But some of you were not around, so we want to read it again. Oh, I'm grateful. I am not failing my life. I because I've seen failure before. Yes, sir. The face of failure is very ugly. It's very ugly. Oh my He doesn't like me, neither does he like, like him. Me and I don't like it either. I don't know. Maybe he likes you, but failure is failure. I don't like it. Uh, failure, we don't like each other. Uh, we never like each so other. Say, I don't want to say it now because if I say it, that's when I'll fail. No, I will never fail in my life. We don't like each other. Things are working for my good. Things, Things are working, working for my good. good. Listen, this is not positive talk. Yes, it is God. the truth. It says, true knowledge shall be just. Knowledge has come. So, what is God's perfect way for you and I as Christians? That's why we said no human being has attained God's perfect way yet. Yes. Not even Jesus, we said. Jesus could not even make it into God's perfect way. Which is why he's coming again to step into it. Yes. Now, in case you are just coming, don't worry about that. We've explained everything why we said so. Because Jesus was supposed to be a king. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Before he was born. Yes, sir. But he died a curse on the cross. Yes, sir. Coming back again to now to, to now be a king. Yes, sir. So you see, he died without fulfilling it. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> now remind me of something. And I know I will not forget because the angel just whispered something to us. The apostles who follow Jesus, are they in God's perfect way yet? No. No. 
He said, why? Because the kingdom has not come yet for Jesus. They have not sat on the throne. Jesus promised them. Yet. Because it is when the heavenly Jerusalem comes that these 12 apostles will be given 12 thrones to judge the 12 tribes of Israel. According to Luke 22, verses 28 to 30. Okay, so we've settled that now. But God's perfect will for you and I in the church. Yes, what is sir. God's perfect will for you and yes, I? He says here, and he gave some to be apostles. Let's read. And some prophets. And some evangelists. And some For what reason? For the perfecting of the saints. Now, pause. Have the saints been perfected yet? Or we are still being perfected? For what? For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Edifying means what? The building up of the body of Christ. Is the body of Christ finally built? No. no. Not yet. Read. So we all have the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. You see that? Yes, sir. The word perfect, there is the word mature. Yes, Tell you. Tell to be fully mature. The church has not attended it yet. No. No. We still have denominational squabbles. Mm -hmm. The Baptists don't like the Anglican. Mm -hmm. The Anglicans believe that the Episcopalian, the Episcopalians are devils. Mm -hmm. The oneness believe they are the one church. The mm -hmm. twoness believe they are two. Mm -hmm. The Pentecostals are still causing train stones because Pentecost means stones. Mm -hmm. That's the meaning of the word Pentecost. Wow. It means stones. Yes, it means fifty. It means stones. Mm -hmm. So the Pentecostals are throwing stones at each other. Mm. Mm. We still have not come mm. to that full knowledge yet. Yes, the unity of the faith and the knowledge. The unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the statue of When he says the Son of God there, he's not talking about Jesus. He's talking about you and I. Wow. Because the Bible says we have received the spirit of adoption to be called sons of God. Okay, for what reason? Verses 14. That we henceforth be no more children. Tell us what? To and for. Come to my church. My church is better. Come to this church. The choir is good. Come to that church. There's, their drama group is best. Come to this church. Their um, prison ministry is world class. Come to this church. Their coffee is nice. Man. Come to this church. If you, if you go to their cafeteria, you can drink. drink. I, many, many years ago, <laughs> When I just became a Christian, I used to go to oh, different God churches yeah. because first time as they used to give us Fanta to drink, no. Coke and Fanta. So I'll be a first time in this church. Oh. <laughs> Myself and my friends will write oh. the name. Oh. And any church yeah. where we drank Coke, we we'll give them space. We we'll put them on leave for three months. Lord have mercy. Go to another church. This home. And we did that also for weddings. Oh. My friend, I said, so, there's, there's no wedding there. So we dress up. We even dance. Okay. And you think you think we are relatives of the people that you are. So are you cousins? I see you and our cousins. <laughs> cousins in diaspora. <laughs> That's how weddings. We are telling you one day I was tired. You may not know you. If I go and break tumbler one day. And they beat me and said, buy tumbler. <laughs> so, weddings and churches. Fanta, Coke. No, Pop Pop. No. Hey, yeah, Pop Pop. That's, that's my biological father's church. When I visit you, you give me Pop Pop and Coco. Kunu. <coughs> He's not good. He's poverty. My father has never bought me soda once. He didn't have cash. There was no reason for that occasion. But here's the point. He said, God's desire is for us not to be children, tossed to and fro, by every wind of doctrine. I believe in the communion. I don't believe in the communion. I believe in paying time. I don't believe in paying time. Paul says, Let, let's stop this thing, being tossed to and fro. The church still has not achieved it yet. Because new people are coming in every day, while others are getting older too. So you see, this has not been achieved yet. This is God's perfect will for the church and it still has not been attained yet. So what do you think you can successfully end up with? The acceptable way. The acceptable way. Find out what works for you. See, see. 
I'm looking for the right words to say it. See, <clears throat> okay, close your Bible. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Yeah. Now, this is close your journals. Close your Bible. Uh, open. Because all of you, you open. It's as if. Okay, fine. You wanted to confirm. Okay. Yeah. Now, here, here is it. Say this. Say, discover yourself. Discover yourself. Wow. Discover yourself. Discover now, yourself. When you say discover yourself, find out consciously. 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 Now notice the emphasis on what? Consciously. consciously. Find out consciously. Find out consciously. What works for you? What works for me? For instance, Moses had a rod. Yes. And the rod he was using to lead the sheep of his father-in-law. Are you following this? Yes, sir. Then he encountered the angel of the Lord in the burning bush. Yes, sir. Amen, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then the angel of the Lord said, What are you holding in your hands? He says, It's a rod. Shepherd's rod. Yes, sir. Oh, my gosh. And do you know what they use that rod for? When the shepherd holds the rod, do you know what he does? He doesn't kill the sheep. Okay, good. He uses it to clear bush paths. Oh. To clear bush paths yeah. for the sheep yeah. coming yeah. to go. You know those malams, they do all those things. Yeah. I did it too. Wow. So clear bush paths. Yeah. We do like this. Yeah. So and, and they still have machete. They have some machete, yes, they, but they have where they kept it. But usually it's rod. Mm -hmm. They can hit anything with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now they use the rod to clear bush paths. That was all Moses knew about the road. Mm -hmm. Now he was about to discover something. Yes. About what he had. Yes, sir. That he didn't know. Yes, sir. Then the Lord said, What are you holding in your hand? He said, It's the road. God was trying to what, bring his consciousness he to something yeah, that, he that he didn't know he had. Yes, sir. He was about to discover himself yes, in another area. Mm -hmm. Then the Lord said, Throw the road down. And he did. The rod became a serpent. What he once heard, he fled away from. Wow. So in your work with God, you will discover things that will make you run. Yes. So you see why you, your friend, your best friend you used to hold dearly can become a serpent on you. It's true. It's so true. You begin to discover new things about yourself. Then the Lord said, now, nah, pick the rod by the tail. Don't touch the head. It will bite you. It's still not a rod. It has become something else. Yes. So when did you become something else yes. that you didn't take consciousness of? So he took it by the tail. It became a rod. Yes. And Moses never asked the Lord, why did you do that? Mm -mm. When Moses finally met the Pharaoh, God did not tell Moses, throw the rod down. God didn't. Mm. Why did God do that to Moses? And Moses did it to the Pharaoh. Because God was trying to tell Moses, I'm your God. Yes, sir. I'm God yes, sir. to you. Yes, sir. Then God now later said to Moses, you will be a God to, to Pharaoh. Pharaoh. Yes, sir. Go and do what I did. Yes, sir. God gave you what? A new consciousness. Yes, sir. So, anytime I'm going now, like this week, anywhere I go to, if I'm going to a new place, I say I go with the speed of dominion. I go with That's the what I say. I don't pray. I don't say, Lord, make that place safe. Whenever I'm going at, even if I'm visiting someone, I say, Lord, wherever I go, I go with the spirit of dominion. Yes, sir. It's a consciousness. Yes, because God has given us the four cardinal rights. The right to rule, the right to reign, the right to reign, and the right to dominate. I don't know how you are saying it. The right to rule first. Then the right to reign. The right to live. And then the right to dominate. These are the four cardinal rights of a Christian. The right to rule. The right to reign. The right to live and not die. It doesn't matter how that cancer comes to your body. You still have the right to live. Then the right to what? Dominate. You can dominate the cancer and kill it. Not with chemotherapy. You can kill it. It's a choice. But it matters what consciousness you have. So when Moses finally went to the Pharaoh, 
He said, Hero, throw the rod down. Hero never knew what had happened to the rod before. And I believe Hero also fled too. But the Pharaoh laughed. God said, And when Moses did that, what did the Pharaoh do? The Pharaoh himself called his magicians. This thing, this thing is commonplace. Moses, Moses is just a new initiate. This thing, this thing is commonplace. So, the Moses was like, wow. You see, what God was trying to tell Moses by asking him to throw his rod down was that, Moses, I know your enemy more than you. Yes, sir. I know the things he does to scare you. So Moses was not surprised. Wow. So this is what the Pharaoh does. But Moses' yes. rod swallowed. Yes, sir. Guess what? Yes. Later on, that rod became something else. Yes, sir. That same rod produced a flower. flower. Yes, sir. You see that? Yes, that was another journey again. Yes, sir. You see that? Yes, see, you are discovering yourself. Yes, sir. The Bible says each tribe is a rod. Yes, sir. So the family you come from is a rod. Yes, sir. But what have you discovered about people of your kind? See, discover yourself as you go. This is what Christianity is all about. Not just dying to going to heaven. What are you going to do there? Discover yourself. Discover yourself. And begin to what? Take consciousness of it. I notice that each time I sleep like this on the side of the bed, that is when I have bad dreams. So change. Take consciousness. Don't play down on this. I notice that each time I sleep like this, or each time I eat pasta. Oh, no. Sorry, not pasta. Yes. No. You go, you all like pasta. Uh-huh. Each time I eat uh, beans. 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 Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Each time I eat beans, yeah. I always have one stomach. So what should you do? Eat beans. Eat beans. Eat beans. Yeah. So I see, every time I eat beans, I see visions. Wow. Eat more. Yeah. Eat more. Anytime I fast, I see things. Fast more. Fast more. You are discovering yourself. So that means that there are many things, there are many new things you can discover about yourself as you work with God. And guess what? There are many things God will show you about the character of your enemy. Like the way the Lord revealed to Moses that the Pharaoh yes, likes to sir. turn rods to serpents. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So two things you must pay attention in discovering. Mm. Yourself? Yes, sir. And what? Your enemies. New things about your enemies. That God will show you that you have never seen before. And don't say, no, no, no. I think it's deja vu or I'm, 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 just, I'm just beside myself. That's where you miss it. God cannot be wrong. Yes, sir. God can never be wrong. What are you going to do about your life? Be cautious. Discover yourself. Discover yourself. Discover yourself. School will not do that for you. School will tell you about your profession. But only God can tell you about yourself. Yes, sir. Find out what works for you. Exactly. Anytime I use water like this, anytime I pour water in my hand, I always receive money. Don't do pour more. So it's so 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 crazy. Every minute. So when you have a lot, it's you. You are between you. I always say everything like that. It's between you and the lot of machine. And the loving machine. Whether the machine likes you or not. But I think we've addressed something yes, about that in the past in the yes. Kodesh. Yes. The angels that play with numbers. Yes, sir. If I play with it, I'll make money. Yes, sir. No, I'm not doing it. <laughs> That's what God called me to I'm do. So sorry, but the truth of matter is, God does not prosper a Christian through lottery. Oh. You understand? But, I'm but if probably he told you, then to play. Yes. 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 So you don't give offers in church, you, go and you give it to machine. But I'm a success forevermore. I will never fail in my life. I will never fail in my life. Now, when I said discover yourself, you see, it's still within the confines of the acceptable. To discover yourself. 
Discover yourself. This is beautiful. Discover yourself. Discover. Begin to pay attention to the things that works for you. Whenever it snows, things like this happen. Mm. If it is bad, then change location. Yes, sir. Oh. Whenever it's summertime, these are the things. Mm. And if it's good, embrace it. Mm. Find out what works for you Find in your daily you life. Yes, in my daily Find out. life. I'm telling you, yes, yes. even in church, yes, when I sit at a place, I hear more, I hear better. Yes. Then be sitting there. Pay attention. Now don't say, if you try to come to the front, say, no, no, I sit here. This is where the angel of the Lord, the angel will put me this in the chair. Ah! <laughs> hey, man, let's close. Bow your heads, let's talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. La sata pratele kere dia koshamante. Soto pratale kara dia kopotene mire dia kosa. Santos, so pratale kira do me sete. Father, have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. This week is a glorious week. This week is a glorious week. Is a glorious week. I tell you, it's a glorious week. The word of Moses will work. Anything that was standing in your way, you will swallow up. You know, there was some many many years ago. There was a prayer I used to pray. And when I then as a banker, when I was working in the bank, if I had some challenges at work, when I'm praying, I say, "You this challenge, I turn you to bread, I eat you up. I turn you to bread, I eat you up. I turn you to bread, I eat you up." When people come to meet us sometimes for prayers, when they have job issue, I tell them take a tissue paper. I say, "Now nah, we turn that issue to a tissue paper. We throw you into the garbage. We flush you away." But this week, yes, sir, this week, the word of Moses will eat up any challenge that has been opposing you, standing in your way. You know, usually when I finish preaching, I just go. But the Lord is not giving me the release to go. He wants us to tell you, this week is a glorious week. Any place where you have been incurring losses, losses, the serpent of Moses will swallow it up in the name of Jesus. Amen. Ah. To swallow up every pharaoh that is fighting your Amen. destiny, your family, your Amen. children, your marriage, Amen. your education. Amen. Say, I have a sound man. For those of you in school, when you are going to class, you, you see, learn to hit your head. Yeah. Not when it is itching you. You hit it when it is itching you. Don't do that anymore. Amen. Don't you know to hit you with all the load you carry on your head? You know it will eat you. Yes. Hit your say, say I have a sound mind. 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 Yes. I have many professors I didn't like in school, but I, I always I always say I love my professors. Because if you don't love them, you can't understand what they teach. I love my professors. And my first used to say you are deceiving yourself. You know you don't like this, but I say, but I just have to love them. You just gotta love them. I love my professors I love so that I can my pass my exams. And I, and I still love you. Still love you. <laughs> yes. Say, I have a sound mind. I have a sound mind. Yes. Yes. This week is a beautiful week. Some of you will see money. Take your seat. You see, when we say things like this, we are not just saying yes, things like this. Was it last week? Last week and a few days ago, we were telling them in the house, we, although we didn't announce it, we told them, we said something is about to happen in the UK, in London. Something is about to happen in the UK. Even two days ago, right before it happened, the night before it happened, we stick to our folks. We said something is about to happen in the UK. And then Pastor Christian sent us the message yesterday, oh, the bridge was born. See, when we tell you things, because we have seen it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The reason why we just told you that is because we see money dropping. Yes, money. Yes, money. 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 Some years ago, we told you about spirit money. Yes, and some people were receiving cash. Yes, yes. It's happening again. That's even a spell. Again. Spirit money. You open a mail. Yes. 
they will pay you for something you don't know about. It happened, they know that we, we, the Lord granted us the privilege to do that once. Yes. Now, nah, he's opening that window again. Spirit money. Amen. It's called spirit money. Say it, say spirit money. If you don't say it, you will not receive it. Spirit money comes to me. Come to me. Spirit money comes to me. Listen, if you are an enemy to money, you will die of poverty. Money are not our friends. Money is not Money and I are best friends. We are the best of friends. <laughs> <laughs> money is my friend. Because money is a defense. The Bible doesn't say the Holy Spirit is your defense. The Holy Spirit is your guide. But money is your defense. If you don't think money is necessary, wait until you have children. Wait and graduate. Then when student knows I are looking for you. <laughs> spirit money, spirit money. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this week, the crooked ways are straight. The rough ways are smooth. Like we said, the Lord has released the same grace that he released for Moses. For the word of Moses to swallow up every evil challenge in your life. Settle what you need to settle this week. Yes. Yeah? Yes. You see financial manner. It is so. Things will start working for you. New jobs will locate you. New opportunities will open unto you. Those who need college admissions for their master's program. It is open. Yes. Yes. The Ivy Leagues now. That's what we're aiming for. We said we're taking over the Ivy Leagues. We're taking over. It's already working. Yes, sir. Something's already happening. Yes, sir. We're taking over the Ivy Leagues. This world belongs to us. Whether you believe it or not, it belongs to us. Yes, sir. If God can exalt Jesus. From a place where nothing good comes from, Nazareth. Yes, God can exalt us yes, here in America. Yes, so good things come from America. Yes, America is far better than Nazareth. Yes, so good things come from here. Yes, Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Tell you like our soul to pray to you.